Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. In this week's video, we are talking body armor. So we have seen a huge resurgence of body armor being worn and purchased in emergency services as well as on the civilian side. So this video, I wanna go through some of the options of body armor out there, uh, kinda get into the levels a little bit, some of the cuts, hard, soft, how are you gonna carry things, and really give you guys some information for what you need for your application. Because while it's super tactical to have your plate carrier on, that's not always the best option for everybody. I will specify that I am not an expert in body armor. I have worn a lot of body armor. I have a bunch of different kinds to go through. However, I'm not gonna be talking to you guys about velocities and specific threat protections because honestly, I don't know it that well and I'm not about to spew something on the internet that I am not absolutely sure of. So this is more of a practical guide to body armor. So the NIJ sets the threat levels for body armor. They're the regulating agency that has to do with that. So they have threat levels rated from one all the way up to four. So level one, 2A, 2, 3A, 3, 4. So with those levels in mind, everything up to that 3A is going to be soft armor and three all the way up to four are going to be your hard armors. I will leave a little diagram up here so you can take a look at what specific threats they deal with. When you're selecting body armor, it's important to understand what threats you're coming up against. The majority of people that are looking to purchase body armor are not coming up against rifle threats. Is it a possibility? Absolutely, but it's not something that's super common. If you look at the statistics for murder in the United States, almost 63% of all murders are committed with handguns, and then the rest are rifles and shotguns and some of the other category. Obviously, looking at body armor, it's always going to be a toss-up between convenience, comfort, and mobility versus protection level. The higher the protection level, the thicker the armor will get, the less it will bend and move with you, and the heavier it will get. While that eight pounds might not seem like a big deal with me talking to you in front of the screen, having worn it all day for several days, it gets very, very tiring very quickly. So it's all a toss up. Obviously the most protection you could get is one of those bomb suits, but you're not going to be able to wear that every day and just walk around and even accomplish the mission you have to. So it's really important to take that into account. The first set of armor I wanna talk about is your internal concealed soft armor. So this is super common for law enforcement to uh, wear on duty. It's something that goes right under the uniform. It doesn't look very obtrusive. A lot of departments are really concerned about public perception and the dude walking around in the external carrier uh, tends to look a little bit more aggressive. Now, I don't really agree with that philosophy. You know, I think that whatever is best for the officer's back and safety is the right way to go. However, I do understand that a lot of these departments are playing a political game at the same time. So the internal soft armor is really nice because you don't see it, it's not obtrusive. This is level two armor, so this will protect you against a lot of handguns, kind of the most common threats. Uh, this exact kind of armor was what I wore while I was a sheriff's deputy or a reserve sheriff's deputy. And what's really nice about this is it has a pouch in the front and this is a little bit of added ballistic protection. So in here, you have a strike plate that will protect you uh, a little bit better than the vest itself, and that goes right over your heart, protects a little bit of your lungs and your great vessels. That's why that's super nice. But this vest also offers a lot of wraparound coverage. So this actually covers your side very well. It comes down pretty far and covers a good portion of your abdomen, pretty easy to size. So this is an awesome option. One of the downsides to this is that you can't just take it on and off throughout the day. You know, you put this on, then you put a shirt over it. If you wanna take this off, you're gonna to have to basically disrobe. So it's not super convenient for that and really is only gonna be good if you're planning to wear this for the rest of the day or for an extended period of time, but they are pretty comfortable. Now, the other disadvantage is, is that this cannot carry anything on the outside. It's armor and that's all it is. Now, we do have soft armor that comes in external carriers. So this one here is by Safe Life Defense. I've had it on the video before, but this is not a review of specific manufacturers. 
There are a ton of people making great armor out there. I really like Safe Life Defense, but there is other stuff on the market you can look at as well. So this armor is actually 3A. So it is a step above this two armor here for the internal carrier. And it's actually 3A plus, so it will protect you against some stabs uh, and some sharp objects, which is really, really nice in these vests. This is nice because it can carry things on the outside. I can also take it off pretty quickly. Say if I you know, get home or back to the base, I can just throw this off and then throw it back on when we're about to go on another call, something like that. If I want, I can put a med kit on the front uh, or some other carrying options. If you're in law enforcement, you can put your magazines, your taser mount on there, uh, handcuffs, get all that weight off your belt. The other really nice thing is that it's got very clear identification. It says exactly what I am. Um, this particular vest you can get in a bunch of different colors and schemes, so uh, it'll work well for that. Now, the external carriers, like I said before, are nice because you get this weight off your belt. A lot of back injuries are caused by those duty belts that police officers wear. That's a lot of weight on their waist, and it's really bad for you. So a lot of departments are starting to switch to external carriers for that reason. Now you notice this has almost the exact same coverage as the other soft armor. I've got armor blocks on the side there. So it is a good option for that coverage. It comes down pretty low. And then the other thing you'll notice about this vest is if I want to up its protection, I can actually slide hard plates down level four or level three plates into the front of this vest and give me a little bit more protection if I believe I'm gonna be facing a rifle threat. Now this armor is a little bit less mobile than your two armor. Um, you know, it's just a little bit thicker, a little bit stiffer, you know, sticks out a little bit more. So keep that in mind with this. However, this will still move with you pretty well and allow you to accomplish your missions. It's a good balance between protection and mobility. However, it does look a little bit more intrusive and especially EMS agencies, they're going to be pretty hesitant to let you wear an external carrier because it does look relatively aggressive and the separation between law enforcement and EMS in the field is something that's perceived as very important. For your corrections officers or somebody that works in really confined spaces with uh, prisoners, you want a vest that has some kind of stab protection in it. Just because it'll stop a bullet does not mean it will stop a knife or a shank of some kind. So make sure if you're a corrections officer, you're getting something that does stop those threats. It's actually a different accrediting agency that does your um, stab protection. So make sure you look into that. A lot of that has to do with the uh, force distribution of a bullet. Uh, and the way the material's made. So this vest will protect against stab ratings. That's why I wear this on the ambulance. That's why I've worn this in EMS, is because right next to a patient, chances are I'm gonna get stabbed, not necessarily shot. So I want something that has that capabilities for me. Now, one of the most popular vests on the market, especially for law enforcement, are going to be plate carriers. But really, these are not the best option for armor for a lot of reasons, and I'll talk to you about this. Now, I really like this vest itself. This is the Shellback Tactical Banshee 2.0 plate carrier. I think they have a newer version of this out there. This is a very specific application. Now, we've all seen the Instagram photos of the really tactical dudes in the full multi-cam, and they've got the plate carrier on them. That's cool. You know, I'm not a special forces dude. I've never been in special forces or in the military, anything like that. A lot of those guys have very specific uh, job duties and need a lot of mobility. They're willing to take the risk. However, the disadvantage of a standalone plate carrier is that it does not cover very much. So inside of this, I've got a level four sappy plate, which will stop uh, armor piercing rounds. It's very, very sturdy. However, that will only really protect my heart and my lungs. While those are my most vital organs, it does not protect on the side, it does not protect down onto my abdomen. So you have an advantage in mobility, you can wear a bigger battle belt with this. However, I had this because as a law enforcement officer, I had my soft armor on under my uniform, and if I was going into an active shooter situation, I could throw this on me, I could have extra magazines and extra protection as well as an IFAC mounted on it already. So I use this as almost a deployable kit, plus I would have all the additional protection from the soft armor, and this would go over top of it and protect my vital organs. So really, I recommend these for somebody that's wearing soft armor already and you wear this in conjunction with it. The other thing to consider with these is that what you're using for a plate. 
So in here, I've got two ceramic plates and each one of those ceramic plates weighs about eight pounds and they're pretty thick. I would not wanna be sitting in this all day. That's very, very heavy. Now you can get polyethylene plates with, which are a synthetic uh, compound. They're a lot lighter, weigh about three pounds a piece, two to three pounds a piece. The disadvantage with the polyethylene is they're very, very thick and they're also very expensive. So because both ceramic plates and polyethylene plates are expensive, a lot of people go out to AR500 and they buy their steel plates. There's nothing wrong with that, but the issue with steel plates is that when you get hit with one, it spalls and it can come up into your face and hit you anyways. Now they do offer some spall protection on there. They've got some coatings on those plates. However, you know, they're very heavy, pretty bulky. Uh, and if I'm wearing it with any regularity, I don't think I'd go that route. The other thing to consider is that a lot of manufacturers make level four plates, but they say they're in conjunction. So if it's a conjunction plate, that means that it has to be worn with soft armor under it to give you that level of protection. That's not to say it won't necessarily stop some of those threats without the soft armor under it, but it is relying on that layer of soft armor to give you that level. So while that's okay, like there are some advantages to that as a law enforcement officer, it's gonna save you some weight there and save you some bulk, but it is not gonna work if you just wanna throw that on. And like I said before, this does not offer the same amount of protection some of these vests do. It can be very, very heavy as well. All of that leads me to the final vest I wanna go through with you and the final type I'm gonna discuss. And this one is my CJAR optimized first spear vest. Now this was my tactical vest I wore on the SWAT team during my last year. Super great piece of equipment, but this is not for everybody. So this is what I would call an entry vest. The armor inside of it is soft armor right off the bat. It's 3A soft armor with some special threat protection, but then it also has two ceramic plates in it that will stop rifle threats. And the reason this is super nice is it can be thrown over just a shirt. You have the full soft armor protection with the rifle protection built into it. You've got a ton of real estate on the front sides and back to mount whatever you need to carry with you. The one advantage this has over say uh, my safe life defense vest is that it has the ability to mount things on the cummerbund on the side. So you can mount a lot more uh, equipment on the side of the vest. I've got my IFAC over here uh, that I had with me. And then it just offers really, really good coverage. The other thing this vest offers is you can attach a lot of other things to it. So this one has some shoulder protectors. You can get some bicep protectors. You can get a groin protector for it as well as a neck shroud. So this offers you a little bit more protection. However, it does come with a premium price tag to go along with it. So it is not for everybody. Now this armor is cut in the bulks cut, so it does offer you a lot of coverage going down your torso. On the back, you can see it's even bigger than the front and offers a ton of real estate there. So this will protect you pretty well. When you're looking at plates and soft armor, you have to look at the cut. You have things called, uh, you know, you've got your sappy plates that are in here. You've got swimmers cut, shooters cut that give you a little bit less protection, but allow you to bring up and get a good cheek weld on your weapon you have to kind of evaluate that. And once again, that goes back to the trade-off between protection and usability for you. So you have to make sure you're still able to accomplish the mission at hand. So as far as my recommendations go, if you are a patrol officer of any kind, I would recommend some kind of internal or external soft armor that's at least a NIJ level two. You can use that in conjunction with a plate carrier if you do need the ability to face a rifle threat. And if you have an active shooter bag, I would actually advise you to go out and get a plate carrier that you can mount all the contents of that active shooter bag onto your vest. In EMS, I would recommend an external soft armor that has some kind of mounting capabilities and really big identifiers of who you are and what you're there to do. If you are on an entry team or taking a more tactical approach, obviously I would recommend something that's more robust, has more capabilities. Uh, such as this vest. And then finally, if you're a civilian looking to buy something, I would actually stay away from plate carriers and would go more with either an internal or an external soft armor with the ability to add plates on the inside. That's simply because that will give you more coverage area and will allow you to quickly don and doff that armor. 
But while the plate carriers might look really cool, I would advise only really wearing these if you have soft armor underneath them. That's not to say everybody does, and that's not necessarily needed from everyone. However, these do not offer quite the same amount of protection across this body surface area, and you're not very likely to be encountering rifle threats as a civilian, although it still could happen. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.